as we get towards the end of the month and the end of the regular season, September the 29th. That is a Sunday night here at home against the Houston Astros. An afternooner, and uh, we'll close out the regular season. But until then, plenty of baseball will be played. Guardians in Kansas City to uh, play the Royals again. Beat them last night, 4-2. to 7.40 today, so 7.10 is when Guardians Live begins. If you want to get all of the coverage, they will head out to play the Dodgers. They'll go to Chicago to play the White Sox. They'll come home, have a little bit of fun. Uh, last road series will be in Arizona against the Cardinals towards the end of the month. Uh, but Guardians Baseball tonight on MMS and on the iHeartRadio app. If you listen to us on the app from out of state, tell me where. I like to know where people are hitting us up. Andy is a bureau chief in Atlanta. Lindsay listens in Charleston, South Carolina. She is a Chicago native, she told me, but currently lives down there. Uh, Nate is in Battle Creek, Michigan. I know it well. Chad listens in Thibodeau, Louisiana. And Matt lives in Cumberland, Maryland, which I was reading is one of those towns that will pay you to live there. Cumberland, Maryland. It's two hours from Baltimore. See, if they're smart, they would pay you to live in Baltimore. Cumberland seems nice. You know, you're close enough to the city. You can get in and out. They should be paying people to live in Baltimore. Cumberland will pay 10 people $10,000 in cash with incentives to get you up to $20,000. They'll give you another 10 for like down payments or renovations on your house or whatever. But this is part of uh, their new, uh, some kind of chamber of commerce push. Uh, the town is uh, very nice, according to the people who live there. It's right on the Potomac River, a couple hours from Baltimore. And we have Matt, who lives there, who's probably kicking himself now because if he had just waited, he could have moved there now. I don't know what took him there in the first place, but um, might be something to, to consider, Mary. I'm listening. If, um, you know, if times get hard. I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to go to. You're not going to move two hours from no. Baltimore? I don't no? think so. No, I'd probably just come home before I do that. Oh. We get paid well, to live there. People in Cumberland, Maryland aren't going to like to hear that. I have no connection there. Oh. They don't need me there. They say it's uh, quick to point out it's not a social services program. They're trying to bring in people who are employed. The town is about 19,000 people, but it used to be much bigger than that. This is another town that's been hollowed out by various industries leaving. They had glass factories there for a while. They were making lots of little animals. They had a tire plant. Don't we have one of those down in Akron? Yeah. The, the Goodyear Company. I think they still make tires. Down little up and coming <laughs> company that's yeah. trying to get a foothold in the industry. And so it, there's a lot of these kinds of towns that are really trying to capitalize on the fact that so many people are doing remote work now. And so, you know, my son is almost done with school, but he already has a job. So when he's done, done, he can do his job from anywhere. So he has to figure out where he's going to go. His friends mostly live in New York, so he will probably move there. But he could put $20,000 in his pocket. Well, at least ten. Tomorrow. What if, what if he moves to New York and falls in love with Mary? Oh. Do you like him young? Because <laughs> he's young. I do not. No. Brian's older than you. Brian right? will be 38 in a couple weeks. How do you feel about that? I'm fine with it. Okay. He's started working out. Mm-hmm. He's a... Uh... What do you mean he started working out? He's like doing push-ups and sit-ups and stuff. He, he wasn't doing that before? No, he was just play the drums. He's a naturally reedy guy. Is that what it is? Yes. He's, a, he's always... Is he starting a, to get a pooch? A what what worried he him? He thinks that he is. I don't well, think Well, he would he know. Is. Right. So he's just a little self-conscious, but he's been doing his daily routine. He's doing push-ups and sit-ups and playing the drums and doing... Mm -hmm. He just started doing lunges as well. He should lift. He's doing great. Yep. He doesn't really have time for all that. You got to make time. He goes to work from 5.30 a.m. until 6 o'clock p.m. Yeah. In a physical job. 
I don't. Yeah, think that's he could, true. Okay, I don't he's, think he could get to right, but that's what I'm saying. He's already getting all of his uh, cardio. Right. Why is he, he doing more cardio? His, he started his. Uh, well, he likes playing the drums. Yeah, that's cardio. But he's not going to not play the drums. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I'm saying it. Well, of course, if you know, whatever. Good for him. Listen, it's all good, right? Right. You get a push, a pull, a squat. He's good to go. Yeah. Now, has he made it clear to you that he has a goal in mind, or is this just a matter of I'm I trying to keep has, myself toy? Yeah, just look, be- look better, feel better, type of thing. He doesn't have like a goal weight or anything like that. Okay. But yeah. Well, it is better to look good than to feel good. So, no, I am not interested in your 20-year-old son. I have a 30-year-old <laughs> buff boy. Well, first of all, my son, maybe this will uh, sweeten the pot. My son will be 24, thank you very much, at Christmas. No, thank you. All right. It's not a thing in this world, a 24-year-old. Yeah, but you don't know me. how the city gets you. You know, you, you're out there yes. in New York. It's Christmas time. You see a familiar face. You're like, that's... That looks like. Well, I don't think she's ever met my son. Well, no, but, the, but the familiar face is because he looks a little bit like Alan. And you're like, is that Alan? No, that's not that Alan. That kid looks like Alan. Yeah, what the hell? And he comes and he's like, hey, I watch you on the live stream sometimes. You're overrated. <laughs> and, and you're <laughs> like, what the it. hell? Why no. would you say that? And you guys kind of fight at first. That is true. He, then, he, will, um, yeah. he will watch on the live stream yeah. sometimes. And then before you know it, the fighting turns into. Fresh love. Yeah, but <laughs> fresh love. Oh the fighting turns into fresh love, <laughs> just like on the Hallmark Channel. Mm-hmm. No, so. listen, Mary and Brian have, uh, they have what seems to be an unbreakable bond. It's a pretty good bond. They have, I guess nothing's unbreakable, but uh, they have weathered a lot of storms. They're doing a long distance thing, and as best as I can tell, doing it pretty well. Damn straight. And now he's like, look, um, I got to keep my stuff in check Mm -hmm. as he approaches 40. Yes. So, you know, I get that. So, to reiterate, no, I don't think your son will move here and fall in love with me. What if he moves there and falls in love with someone else and then you go, hmm, what could have been? No, I don't think so. (laughs) All right. <laughs> Good for him. Uh-huh. Now, he'll be in Brooklyn, and you'll be in Queens. hmm So you will probably never meet. Right. All right. That's what they say, but then one that day- That is what they say. You're on the, the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> on the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> and you, also, you're getting ready to jump, yeah, and somebody walks up behind you. It's roller a, skating. He's rollerblading. Yep. They bump into each other. You got your they chocolate and my peanut yeah, butter. Yeah. She was carrying uh, a big old bag of, uh, like- Baguettes, <laughs> groceries with yeah. spinach and yeah. baguettes in it, like it's stereotypical. Mm-hmm. Uh, some some uh, green sticking out the top and a nice long piece of bread. Celery he's stalks. He's got, uh, he's got a box full of num. num, num. What? Go to bed. You don't even know what you're saying. Nunchucks. Right <laughs> a box full of nunchucks. Yeah, he all just right. got them from Chinatown. Yeah, he's all excited about them. He's gonna uh, give them to some of his friends, and uh, they're all gonna start a, a gang using nunchucks. And uh, everything gets all mixed together, and you're oh, you're so mad at each other. But then, becomes, say it with me, Ellen, fresh love. Fresh love. <laughs> no, no, maybe maybe that happens to you. You come here to visit, and then you are the one who actually crashes into him on a bicycle with your baguettes. Hmm. Maybe. And he feels something stir mm. inside of him that he's never yeah, felt yeah, never before. Yeah, something before. has awakened. Awakened yeah. inside him. Something that had lain long dormant and yet now returns Yay! to the surface. Mm-hmm. Alan, my mom had given me a stone pineapple for outside years ago because it supposedly meant welcome. The day I found this out, I dragged that thing to the backyard so goddamn fast. It technically does mean welcome. It just means welcome to a specific portion of the population. Upside down bananas on your shirt means you eat them without the peel, so then everyone just thinks you're weird. Well, I do eat them without the peel. I don't eat the peel. No, he means like naked. I eat my bananas. I hold the peel as like a natural handle, but I don't. Yeah. Alan, we're in the same boat. 
I break my bananas in half and squeeze the bottoms Ugh. until the banana pops out. Like a gogurt. <laughs> Therefore, I nature's gogurt. <laughs> nature's gogurt. Yeah, that's all right. Speaking of bananas, is anybody watching Chimp Crazy? No. Oh. What is it about? Because I. It's it, Tiger King adjacent, where yeah. it's a an irretrievably broken human being who sought solace in the animal community to the detriment of everything else. It's this woman who was running some quote unquote animal sanctuary, but she runs afoul of PETA. It's on HBO. I think it's only three or four episodes, but and I Gwen was watching it and I kind of fell into it. I walked in and she was watching it and I got sucked in. It's everything you'd want it to be. It's I not it's not it, as murdery as Tiger King, but I mean it's just you look at this woman and, and she has like children. They're grown, but it's so clear. That her own children don't mean anything even remotely close to what these goddamn chimpanzees mean to this woman. It's these people who have these wild animals and put them in cages so that they can, I don't know, fill up some lost part of themselves. There's a part in the second episode where they have to talk about the lady who got her face ripped off. Remember that? Oh, yeah. So that's she, what I thought this was. I thought this was like a documentary about the chick who had her no, face ripped off. No, that's part of it when they're kind of talking about, because all these people are interconnected. There's this network of uh, people who know each other and kind of an underground railroad, if you will. And one of the guys who pops up, um, God. One of the guys who pops up, as we're watching it, I go, oh, my God, I remember this. We talked about this. The dude out in the sticks, like suburban Cincinnati, the guy who stole, he was the city controller or something, and he stole stole a bunch of money so he could buy, like, jet skis and ice, uh, like, what's the guy's name? Because the woman is in Florida, but the guy that she... Uh, hooks up with, not hooks up, but like is connected to, is a guy who stole a bunch of money from the city. He was, oh, Cy Vierstra. We talked about this guy some years ago. This is the guy out in Vinton County, Ohio, who embezzled like $240,000 because he wanted to create a wildlife center. And he's in this documentary. But what jumped out at us at the time was he spent the money on, like, hot tubs and popcorn carts and snow cone machines. This guy just kept taking money from the city that he was supposed to be overseeing. And as we're watching this, I'm like, why is this guy not in prison? I don't understand why he's not. But he was basically using his small town or whatever city he was in charge of. He was using the city credit card to buy a bunch of dumb crap. Did you see the, the people doing the Chase Bank hack? Infinite no. money? Yeah. So Yeah, this, they're this, like, hey, this is illegal, FYI. Yeah, there's yeah. people, they're like, did you know if you write yourself a check, uh, Chase Bank will put that the funds immediately available? And it's like, yeah, it's check fraud, though. And, <laughs> yes. And, and, so like, <laughs> and they have all your information because you're doing it into your account with your card, <laughs> with your yes. face on the camera. So, yeah, like... It'll show up. It was showing up like the funds were available, but also you can't even take all that much money out of an ATM. You can't take out that. Like people were doing like twenty thousand dollars. I also hope people realize that all these viral money trends. It's the banking industry trying to catch people mm -hmm. engaging in fraud. Yeah. Dummies. Ooh, I found this cool hack. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you? It's like Bashemi. Hello, fellow kids. Yep. Yeah, it's, you know, but you kind of can't blame people for looking around and going, all of these, like, Congress people and rich people got mm -hmm. those COVID loans, you the know PPE what I mean? Loans, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was those were all scams yeah. for a lot of people, and so you kind of- well, one of the guys I saw talking about it was like, yeah, a lot of people got away with the PPE loan scam, but this one was uh, definitely, you're not getting away with this one. Yeah. They, they have all your information. Yeah. So they just learned about check writing, essentially. Basically, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Like, because if you... Well, Gen Z it, just figured well, out about... It, 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 because if you write a check and the money isn't in your account, the check bounces. Right. But they wouldn't know that so what, if they and then what happens check. Is they are... Oh, and then they're overdrafted. Right. But the, the, the glitch part of it was 
that Chase was making the funds immediately available. Whereas usually if you get, you know, deposit something like a large check, they'll put a hold on it for a few days before they put it into your account. Or they'll say, if you want it right now, there's a fee. Yeah, something like that. Or you can wait the requisite number of days and it goes in for free. But yeah, it is still check fraud. It's still check fraud and yeah. you're still going to be, you know, accountable for the money that you tried to deposit or whatever. Like it's, yeah, it's not a good idea. It's not free money. Oh my gosh. Hey, Francis. Hello, Alan. What's going on, How Francis? You? How are you? Well, I'm great, but while we're on the topic of scammers, I'd like everybody to know I ran into a certain sly fox over the weekend. A certain great sly fox. What's he talking How'd about? How'd you enjoy the concert? How'd you enjoy the concert in Pittsburgh, Alan? Good. Did you like it? <laughs> yes. You are so I... handsome, man. Ew. I was the guy. <laughs> you the guy that was texting <laughs> earlier about not being gay, but cranking it to the uh, live stream. <laughs> I am, I'm confused myself. I saw him from behind at first, recognized the, the cute haircut, the sassy grayness, the converse, the jeans, the white shirt. Oh, God. Then my wife says, uh, that's your hall pass. And I said, you got that right. That is my hall pass. <laughs> Fran- <laughs> Francis, you were sitting behind me at Green Day in Pittsburgh? I was sitting behind you, and I also uh, got, had the privilege to walk behind you across the Roberto Clemente Bridge, the- if you know what I mean. <laughs> if you know oh, what I mean. <laughs> Francis, were you the guy in the Indians jersey? Yes, with the long gray hair. And okay. Okay. Well, no, we're we're like walking up Fourth Street, and it's just me and Gwen and Nora. We're walking over to uh, PNC Park, and there's a bunch of people behind us. But I'm not really paying attention because you know narrow streets or whatever. And somebody behind is like, "I think that's that guy, Alan." He's like trying to make sure I hear him, but I'm such a high screener, I'm not paying attention. And Gwen goes, "I think somebody back there is trying to get your attention." And I turn around and. Francis is in like an old. There were a lot of people in, in at that show in Pittsburgh in like Guardians and Indians jerseys, and you know. Yeah, there sure were, man. Yeah. But hey, guess what? We both met famous people. I met you. You met me. I'm the best-selling author of drugs and other things to do in <laughs> Cleveland. So consider yourself. Home That's man. beautiful. Oh, look at that. Well, I, I, you're not gonna be my hall pass, Francis. But um, okay. Well, I, did you have a good time, Francis? Oh, he hung up. All right. Well, lighten He's up, gone. Francis. Yeah. There He's you go. Gone. That uh-huh. was your one chance. At- he left. You blew it, Alan. Yep. Shows what he knows. Putting me under a microscope. I wasn't wearing a white T-shirt, Francis. Shows what you know. Shows how, see? He got every other part of my outfit right, but he didn't get the shirt color right. Watching me closely. Please. Should have been watching what was going on stage. Not me. Alan, the old scam was to buy a car on Friday back in the days before instant banking for more than you could afford and then sell it for more money in a different market, paying off the loan and keeping the difference. I guess I, that sounds like a lot of work to probably get a couple grand, but I guess a couple grand is a couple grand. Uh, thank you, Francis. I <laughs> didn't know where that was going. I got to take a break. You want to get the last word in? 